Hello and welcome to this After Effects Basics tutorial which is going to be looking at Timeline Basics. Now Timeline is this area at the bottom down here and I don't want you to worry if yours looks different than this because I'm going to show you how to customise it, how to change it and how many of the buttons work. We're not going to go through everything but we are going to go through quite a lot just to show you how to work with lots of different bits and pieces in the Timeline. Now I've reduced my Timeline pretty much to the bare minimum and I'm just going to go through these bits and pieces to show you what they are and what they do. Okay, so what have I got in this composition? I have got four layers. The top layer is actually an adjustment layer, which we'll look at a bit later on. I'll show you how you can see what that is. The second layer is a nested composition. It's another composition which has been brought into this composition. It's actually hidden behind here in my timeline. All your compositions can appear as tabs in the timeline if you wish. They are also in your project panel, and I've got them here in comps. So you'll see that they're in your project panel. So even if I was to X this off and get rid of it in my timeline, it would still be here in my project panel. If I want it back, I can double click it here in the project panel and there it is once again. So you can have them as tabs, but if you get rid of the tabs, they'll still be up here in the composition panel. And this is my effects controls and it's showing me what effects are applied to the various layers that I've got. So this layer has got contrast curse effect and layer underneath, which is the pre-comp, has that got an effect? Yes. It's got Digital Juice's Color Rules effect on it, which has been used to play around with the color on it. The layer below that is a video layer, which has also got an effect applied to it, the tritone effect. And the bottom layer is a music layer, which has got no effects applied at all. Now, I have gone through how layers work. So I've gone through layer names and source names. So I'm not going to go through that again, but I do want to start to go through the buttons and the bits and pieces so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so what have we got? Now, yours might be laid out differently to this, but we're going to cover the same things. Firstly, right at the top, we have a time indicator. Now, I'm in After Effects CS 5.5, and what they've done is they've given us both time code and underneath frames and the frames per second. I'm working on a PAL system, which is 25 frames per second. So if I pull this forward a bit, you'll see that that's 21 seconds and nine frames in, or the actual frame number is 534, and we're working at 25 frames per second. If you want to invert this so that you can see the frames at the top and the time code underneath, hold the control key and click, and it just moves it the other way around. So we can see frames at the top, time code underneath, and you can see the time code and frames moving as we move the current time indicator. Okay, I'm gonna control click and take that back to the beginning. Now we've got a whole series of buttons here, which I'm not gonna cover in this tutorial. Most of these buttons are going to have tutorials of their own later on. I might mention some of them in passing, but I'm not going to go into great detail. So what have we got actually down here in the timeline? Well, the first thing we've got is a twirly or a triangle or a scroll down. I call these triangles twirlies. And when you click the twirly, that opens up a list of items that are affecting your layer. Now, we're not going to go through all of these, but this is where you can find the details of the effects applied to the layer. So if I click on this layer again, you can see up here we've got this contrast curve applied. If I open up Effects, you'll see that the contrast curve is in there and you can drill down by opening up the twirlies and the twirlies to go down and sort it all out. Now, as I say, we're not going to go into those. But also underneath you've got the transforms, which are fixed effects, which are applied to every layer that you bring into your composition. And if I open those up, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of those. We're not going to go through all of those, but underneath this twirly, you'll find that there is a lot more information, which we will get into a lot later on. Second thing we have is a label color. And if you click on these labels, if you actually want to identify your different layers, you can actually do it by clicking on these layers. And as you can see, the layer color here is shown here in the timeline. So I'm gonna click on this layer and I can change it. I can go to a dark green and you'll see that that's gone to a dark green and look, this layer has gone to a dark green. Now, just for an example, I'm gonna say that I always want to be able to select my contrast curve and my video at the same time. So what I can do is I can click on this and I can also take that to dark green and then I can click on any one of these colors and I can go to select label group and when I click that 
Notice that both the dark green layers have been selected so that I can work on them. Because I've put them in the same group, they're easier to get hold of. But the idea behind these labels is that every different type of layer can have a different colour so you can quickly identify what is what. We'll look at label colours perhaps a little more when we do some of our preferences in the later tutorial. Next we have the layer number. Don't underestimate this, this is actually a powerful thing. You have layer numbers and it always starts at one and goes through your whole composition. You can access this number and use it, but I'm not going to show you how to do that today, but you do have layer numbers. Then you have the layer name and source name, which we've covered before in a previous tutorial. And then you have the eyeball, so you can actually turn on and off the visibility of a layer. So I can turn that off and we can't see the video anymore. Turn it back on and there it is clearly to see. So let's turn the eyeball on and off. You can't see this Linda's Farm bit here because obviously the current time indicator isn't over it. But if I was over that and then turned off the video layer beneath it, we'd still see that in place. And notice that because I have the contrast layer still selected, when I turn the eyeball off for the layer below, the contrast layer is also being turned off, which is affecting how Linda's Farm looked. So if I then click away and just select the video layer and turn that off, now the contrast layer is staying visible. These are the icons for sound. So if we want to turn the music off and we don't want to hear it anymore, or perhaps we want to turn off the audio in the background of our video, we can turn that on and off here. Next we have a solo switch. Now the solo switch will allow you to solo or just look at any one layer that you click on. So I can click on say Linda's Farm and look at the layer. It looks a bit drab. Wouldn't it be great if I could solo more than one layer? Well of course you can. You can solo as many layers together as you like in any combination. So if I want this contrast layer above to be added to it I can click the solo on that and all I'm looking at are those two layers. The layers underneath are ignored. So that's soloing. Turn those off. Next we have locking layers, so if you want a layer not to be changed, you're happy with it and you don't want it to be changed at all, you can actually hit the lock and now it cannot be selected. So if I try and click on it in my timeline, you'll see I can't actually get hold of it. I can twirl it down, but can I change any of the effects? Nope, can't change anything. So that layer is completely locked and this is very useful when you're having problems selecting things. You can lock all the layers you don't want to select and then you've only got access to the layer that you do want to select. So for instance in this one I might want to lock my contrast in place as well but I still want access to my Linda's Farm which I can then grab and move around and no matter where I click anywhere else the only thing I can grab is that one layer. So turn the locks off. Now you may have quite a lot of other things showing along this timeline. And that's because there is an awful lot more to the timeline and which can be found through various other means. One way is simply to right click in a spare area and then go down to columns and you'll see that all of these columns are turned off. In other words, they aren't visible at the moment. But there are a whole load of other columns that can be added and you could just click on one and add it in. However, I want you to notice at the bottom there are three buttons down here. And you can expand and collapse the layer switches pane. So if I click on that one, I've brought in a whole load more buttons and in fact if I click on the other ones you'll see that there are a whole load of buttons I can bring in and even that isn't all of them. If I was to right click in the spare space here you'll see columns, I've still got parents and key that I could even bring in which are both useful but I'll come to those later. So I'm going to go through these one at a time by turning them off. Now what have we got here? This is called the shy layer. If you've got lots and lots of layers in your composition and you've finished working with them and you don't want to have them cluttering up your layers but you don't want to get rid of them, what you can do is you can shy them. And this is a little guy, in fact if you look up here you can see a bigger view, there's a guy hiding behind a wall and if you click the shy he disappears behind the wall however you can still see the layer until you click the shy guy at the top, click the shy guy and the layer's gone and the icon is indented or turns dark grey to tell you that there are some shy layers. Click it again and it brings the layers back and click it again and then it won't shy unless you happen to go on that layer. Now the other thing about these shy layers is you can just click and drag and pull down and do a whole range very simply and turn them off, turn them back on and then just click and drag and bring them back again. So it's very easy to do that. Mm -hmm.